I'm going to be talking about digital notebooks and digital journaling up next on Gifted Guzman. Many of us are beginning our school years again very soon, and it looks like many of us are going to be beginning our school years in a virtual learning type of situation. A lot of us haven't been told yet exactly what that's gonna look like, but as a teacher, and I know my fellow teachers, we like to prepare for the upcoming school year ahead of time. So here it is already the middle of July, and I wanna start preparing for what potentially could be going on. So one of the things that I've been thinking about is using a notebook or journaling. I normally teach science and English language arts. Uh, sometimes I've taught social studies. The only thing I haven't really taught is math. As far as the core subjects goes, I've even taught art. When I teach these different subjects, I generally like to have my students keep a journal or a notebook, depending on what the subject is. So I've been thinking a lot about how is that something that I do digitally, where normally in the classroom, I would have printouts of notes, or I would have things that they would color and label and vocabulary that they would do. So how am I gonna do that digitally with the students while they're away in their homes and I'm either in the classroom or in my home teaching them? So I was thinking predominantly of science and English language arts. Again, you can use this for other subjects. I just wanted to show you what format I'm using and what I have going on so that you could get an idea and either do something like this, or if you wanna reach out to me, I can send you a copy of what I've got created so far and you can add to it, okay? So I'm gonna show you on my screen what I have going on. Oops, not that. <laughs> so this is my science journal. What I did is we are still using Google Suite as far as we know in our district. And um, it looks like we'll be using that with Schoolology instead of Google Classroom. And I'm not exactly sure how all of that works, but I'm gonna be learning it more as we go along. So I'm gonna continue to use Google for right now. So one of the things that I thought would work really well is Google Slides. The first thing that I did is when I opened Slides, I went to File and I went to Page Setup and I chose custom and did eight and a half by 11, and then I applied that. So that applies that to all of the slides so that then the slide goes from this to this, okay? So it's more, to me, it's more like a journal page, it's more like a notebook page, so it's more of that justification. Um, so that's why I went ahead and changed it. You don't have to if you don't want to. So then I was thinking about this Usually at the beginning of the year, we let the kids have notebooks, journals, and they kind of decorate them and put their own personal style on them before they go forward. And that's kind of something that we do when we're getting to know them and things of that nature. So on this first title page, I put a box where they can type their name and then they can choose a background color, which for this, they just click on background and then they can choose an image or they can choose a color. They can even choose a gradient color, okay? And so they can do something like that, whatever, whatever they enjoy. And then I've asked them to insert six to 10 science pictures to use to decorate the journal cover. So this can be anything that they like about science, anything scientific that they think of. They can either go and get the images from Google or you can insert image here you can upload, you can search the web, and when you search the web, the nice thing about Google is it pops up over here on the side, and then you can just, let's say I just typed in science and went there. Then I have some of these, and if I liked them, I, you know, I could put these little people on there and I just drag them and drop them over there. Um, or I could type biology or any kind of science that I like, and I could drag that and drop that over there into my journal. Okay, so that, that's giving them a chance to pick what they want, choose what they want to have, add some color, some of their favorite colors, so they're getting to do that. Some of the kids that are more advanced, they may want to do some other things and put a background image. I would say let them. I'm going to let my students do what they feel most comfortable with. I'm just trying to get some of them to get started in, in keeping this journal. The next page that I created is a table of contents. Again, I just put a little clip art in the background as a border, page number, and what content is on the page. That's something we can just type into later on. And you can always um, right click on this and you can duplicate it. So you can have more of them as you go throughout the year if you need more of them, okay? The next thing I'm going to have the students do is an about me. Um, our school colors happen to be black and gold, so I went with this goldish tone and this black. 
They're going to describe their favorite science lesson, name one thing they're hoping to learn about in science, what is one thing they struggle with in science, um, why they like their favorite science video. I find that a lot of the students will go to YouTube and watch science. There's all kinds of different science videos available, even if it's just Magic School Bus and Bill Nye, some of the old stuff, there's the Psy Guys. There's all kinds of science videos, and I know a lot of them use videos in their daily lives and go to YouTube, so I thought this would be something that they could talk about that they had seen that they liked, and then describe what they think real-world scientists do for a living. And especially now with the virus going on, they may have a better idea of what certain types of real-world scientists do for a living. So this is something that gets me a little bit of information about who they are and what they think about the science class. What I was thinking about doing with something like this is when we go to do this, and I'm assuming we're going to be on Zoom, again, still not super clear, but I'm thinking we're going to be on Zoom or some type of platform like that. So I can show my screen like I'm showing you my screen right now, and the students can see this, and maybe I can type in my own what I'm doing and, and what I have going on, and then I can pick certain students and I can share their screens and they can share if they're willing to and they can share what they've typed or what they've put as pictures on the front of this. Then um, I begin with the unit one title page. So depending on what grade level you have, I'm actually teaching seventh and eighth grade in Texas this year. I've taught sixth grade before, so it just depends on what your unit is. I left this um, vague because I am teaching a couple of different grade levels so that I can just send this out in mass to all of my students and they can use it as a template. So they're going to type the name of the first unit once I tell them what it is. So let's say seventh grade it's cells. So they're going to type cells title page. Again choose a background color, insert three to five pictures, and one of the things that I really like that I started doing last year when we had physical journals was I have them write two questions that they have about the unit, especially if it's a unit like cells um, for the eighth graders when we're talking about Newton's laws, that's something that they, they aren't as familiar with. So I find that they have more questions about it when we start than if we're doing life systems and we're doing food chains and food webs, which is things they've seen a million times, they don't have as many questions. So this helps me to see some of their questions so that we can answer them as we go through the unit. The next thing I have is vocabulary. What I'm envisioning is for this, I'm gonna give them a Google Doc or a Word Doc or some kind of document that just has vocabulary word, definition, picture. And then what they're gonna do is copy and paste it and put it over here into this slide so they can just go back and they'll know in their table of contents, like page five, that's where my cells vocabulary is for that unit and I can go back and reference it. Then vocabulary can't just stand on its own. So I made these little colorful um, Frere models and I'm asking them to put the definition, which they get from the definitions I gave them to insert a picture so they can again come over here and look up whatever word they're doing. Let's say they're doing vacuole. They can come over here and look up vacuole and put a picture in. Then they're going to explain it in their own words. And then they're going to tell me how they're going to remember, like what kind of clues they're going to think of, what they're going to associate it with, things like that. You can always change this up and have them do it. I've seen examples and non-examples. I've seen write it in a sentence. I've seen different kinds of things that you can do. So again, this is something that you can change up. The next thing that I put in there is notes. So insert your notes here or a link to your notes in your Google Doc. So I'm gonna show them later on how they can get a link from something that they've created and how they can insert it so they can just click on it and go to that and I'll do a separate video on that if you're not sure how to do that yourself because I'm going to make a video too for my students so that they'll see how to do something like this. So if it's not a copy and paste that I can just have them put on the slides then I can at least have them put their link so that when they come to this they're like oh uh, I lost my notes I don't know where my notes are oh but if I click on the link it'll take me over to my drive and I can see my notes that I've got over there, whether it's in a Google form or whatever format that I choose to do. And I'm not quite sure yet how I'm gonna do that. So that's what I'm planning on doing with science. I have something very similar with English language arts. As you can see, I just changed some of the background imaging, the about me, and then I'm asking them about their favorite book, a skill they're hoping to improve on, what thing they struggle with, 
um, why they have or haven't reread their favorite book. Um, some kids love a book and they'll read it 20 times. I want to know, why did you read Diary of a Wimpy Kid 20 times? What was it about it that you really loved? So that when I'm helping them look for new books, that's something that I can hone in on. Or why didn't you reread it? Maybe it's your favorite book, but you don't really like reading. So why didn't you reread it? Okay, and then what they think writers do for a living. Again, a title page, again, vocabulary. This is gonna be like if I have hyperbole or semicolon or whatever vocabulary I have on here. Another vocabulary for notes. And then for English language arts, I added in a creative writing. Um, what I would normally do in the classroom is I would put up an image every week, something odd that I found on the internet. Um, I, I remember one time it was a guy and he's running through a field like this and there's like crows behind him. And so my eighth graders wrote their own version of kind of a scary story of what they thought had happened there and what was going on. Um, so I want to do that to continue the creative writing. So I'm going to have a creative writing page as well on my English language arts so that that's something they can do. So one of the nice things about these digital journals is you can continue to add pages and add pages and add pages and add pages. And then you can just go in the table of contents and put, this is where I have this and this is where I have this and that way they know how to jump down to that. You can even put a divider page with pictures and color so that it goes from this is my reading and this is my creative writing part of my journal. You could essentially have them do two different Google Slides. I don't think that I'm going to do that personally because I don't think that the, the students are going to do as well if they have to have multiple things that they have to keep track of. So I just want to have one journal for them to write in. One of the things I wanted to show you really quickly before I end this video, um, and I know it's getting a little lengthy, so I don't want you to have to sit here all day, but when I give this to the students in Google Classroom, you can make it so that it makes a copy for each of them, which is nice because then they have a copy and it's already set up as the template and I can go and show them how to duplicate the slides. However, my understanding with Schoolology, which we're moving to, is you can give them the resource, but it doesn't make a copy for them. So you need to teach them that they can go to File, and they can go to Make a Copy of the entire presentation, and they can make a copy for themselves. This will then be their copy that they can type in so that we're not all typing in the same copy. If you make it so that we're all typing in the same copy, you're just going to have everybody typing everywhere, and it's going to kind of be a hot mess. So you want each student to have their individual one so that they can go in. The only thing with this is once you've given it to them, any subsequent pages that you want the students to add, they're going to have to follow along with you and add those pages digitally. Now they would have to follow along with you and add them in paper in the classroom. So it's going to take some learning and some teaching them how. Luckily, I've had my students um, consecutive years because I'm the gifted and talented specialist. So I get the gifted and talented kids every year. So my students are already familiar with this. But I feel like this is something that given some time, showing them on videos, showing them on Zoom, calling on some of them on Zoom and showing their screen so they can show what they've done, um, showing some of the reluctant learners like, oh, look, you did a good job. You put those, those are really good images that you chose. Can you explain why you chose that background color? What did it make you think or feel? Why'd you do that? Oh, show me your vocabulary. Oh, that's really great. That, oh, that's a really great hint on how to remember that. Now maybe the rest of us can remember it that way too. So, so we're still getting that classroom type interaction, I think, with this journaling and this notebooking. We're just doing it in a digital way. So I wanted to share that out to you guys. I hope that all of this was interesting to you and that you liked it. Again, if you would like a copy of what I've already started, please let me know and I will be glad to send one to you and you can do that on your own or again, you can just go to Google Slides and do that. There's lots of other ways that you can do digital notebooking, but I hope that it's something that you think about for your classroom. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Gifted Guzman. I'll see you next time.